Emmanuel Uwangwe Mimi Emmanuel Uwangwe nikiwa nimechaguliwa kama mwanachama wa bunge la kitaifa na hapa kwa jina la Mwenyezi Mungu kwamba nitakuwa mwaminifu na mtiifu kwa watu wa Jamhuri ya Kenya kwamba nitatii nitaheshimu nitatetea nitatunza nitahifadhi na kulinda katiba ya Jamhuri ya Kenya na kwamba nitatekeleza nita majukumu yangu ya ubunge kwa uaminifu na uangalifu ewe Mwenyezi Mungu nisaidie He is a seasoned member of parliament for Navaholo constituency He was born in Sisokwe village where he underwent his education journey right from Sisokwe primary school I want to know I just to Emmanuel and my father is Wango so I used those two born in 1975 in a very small village called Sisokwe I went to Sisokwe primary school in Gotse Boys High School I came to School of Monetary Studies. I also went to School of Credit Management. Went to Kenya School of Kenya Methodist University for my first degree. Wangwe explains his post-education journey after attaining his second degree from the Jomo Kenyatta University. I did my second degree at Jomo Kenyatta University. That is where I am. I got employed in 1999 as an accounts assistant. In 2000, I crossed over and joined Caltex Oil and grew all through from a stocks accountant to director of marketing by the time I was exiting 2012 in various oil companies. So basically I worked as an accounts assistant for about two to three, about uh, one year. Then the rest have been an oil marketer all through. So what I understand most is oil marketing. Actually, upon attaining directorship, you had reached the apex of the, the, the sector. And uh, I also went into my private, I was also doing my private uh, business in the oil industry. Wango entered into the field of politics in 2004, where he says that the opportunity availed itself since he was posted to commence on the DRC branch as the country's manager and worked for an year and six months. So you, I, 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 as a result of interaction of, with very many stakeholders, I actually uh, happened to plunge into, oil, into, into politics. But it came in 2004 when I was posted to commence the, the branch in DRC as the country manager. When I went to DRC in Kinshasa, where I was based for one, one year, six months. He managed to gain experience from his French colleagues, whom he says gave him the momentum to start a foundation. The main aim of starting the foundation, Wango says, was to help his people back at home by providing the state of education, in that case, educating the needed children, building schools, among many. I gained so many French friends. And uh, those friends made me now to start a foundation. Uh, instead of getting money and spending on myself, I looked at where do I come from. So I started a foundation whereby I would now, if a friend could give me anything which is not my salary, I used to put it in the foundation. And went back home, used that to educate a few boys from the village, I went back and could be able to build classrooms using manual laborers. So mine was to buy what is commercial. And labor, I used to use the local boys to, uh, to do it. So I became a darling of the, the villagers for some time. Wangwe explains that in 2007 he was obliged to vie for the seat of member of parliament, but he deviated into doing so since his uncle, the late Dr. Kolundo, was vying for the same seat and therefore did not want a competition with his family. Instead, he supported him. And uh, come in 2007, uh, my uncle, the late, the late Dr. Kolundo, was vying, was the sitting MP, so I didn't want to compete my own uncle, but I supported him fully, so I became part of the friends of his campaign. All was not successful as his uncle was defeated by Honorable Manyala, who took over the seat. So, um, unfortunately, he did not succeed in 2007, 
on the Pumanella care to cover. And when he took over, it was now an issue of uh, Dr. Kulundo felt he was not very strong enough again to come and try in 2013. So he used to push me through and say, now, it's now time for young men to, to, to move on. And Wangu put a stab in the ballot box and was elected as a member of parliament for Navajo constituency. And then I put a stab at the, 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 the ballot and God gave me the chance. Among the achievements that Wangwe has achieved since elected as a member of parliament includes building both primary and secondary schools, increasing the number of enrollment of students to university from 45 to about 720, modernization of infrastructure both in schools and in the constituency, building of tertiary institutions, among many. My greatest achievement to date is the transfer of uh, uh, knowledge from how I've been able to, to, to push my people in terms of education. Uh, the number of schools are built, uh, both primary and secondary. The enrollment rate that I've, uh, I've seen now, when I, when, I, when I took over the whole sub-county, you can imagine it's 100% rural. Only 45 students were joining uh, national schools by then. 45 in the entire sub-county were able to join university then. Today, I'm doing about 720 students to university. And then, when I took over, we had 22 uh, secondary schools. Today, I'm proud to have uh, 33 secondary schools. When I took over, I had 68 primary schools. Now, we have 83 primary schools. They shift and uh, when you also look at the, the modernization of the, the, the infrastructure, it's so amazing. All the old schools, I'm bringing them down and getting new uh, schools done, both primary and secondary. So the transformation that I've seen in my constituents in terms of academics is very well. But I would feel happy to stand tall and say, show the world, and the world will accept that I've moved one step uh, to the right direction. Number two, uh, when I took over, we did not have any tertiary institution in my place. Through my time of 10 years, we now have the medical college, well built, it's up and running. We have the technical college, it's well built, well set, it's up and running. We have been able to liaise with the university like Masinda Uri University. It's really collaborating well with us in terms of absorption of my students from my constituency, whom we can even write a letter ahead and allow my students to attend classes. When we get funds from CDF, we pay. That is how close now I'm able to work with the university. The Office of the Member of Parliament did also partner with the national government in installing a free Wi-Fi network with an aim of increasing the level of doing research among the youths. The youth are now free. We are able to talk and less with the youth at all spectrum. The government has given me the this Wi-Fi facility is called what? Through the Ajira. Yeah, it is. I, I installed it at a cost of 1.6 million. I'm free. All the youth can now come to my CDF office, access free Wi-Fi, 2.5 kilometer radius. Yes. So you can imagine how good it is. When the youth don't have money in their phones, they just walk to my office, they sit outside, they can access Wi-Fi. There is no issue of visa to get, to get to access to the world. And things are better now. If they come, they sit anywhere. My CDF compound is on uh, vast land, of, um, vast land because Navajo is rural, land is available. So they come and sit anywhere, even on the rocks, on the ranges, everywhere as so long as they can be able to browse the internet. He explains some of the tough experiences he has experienced as a member of parliament, stating that after being enrolled fully in the parliament, he was determined to be posted in the energy committee since he had much experience on that field. But all went in vain as he was posted in a different committee contrary to what he had expected. It, it, it is challenging. I had been a full director of marketing at the top. Uh, when I came in, in the first instance, I expected to join the Committee on Energy and even head the Committee on Energy because very few people, very few leaders in this house understand issues of petroleum and how petroleum works. That was my expertise. 
unfortunately, when I approached and wanted to, to, to be a member, even not being a chair, to be a member of energy, I was told, no, it's not your choice. Wait, you'll be allocated. So that is a shock that um, came by my way. And I have lived with it because it's provided for the standing orders that the chief whip will allocate you where to go. However, Wango feels that the process of induction of new members into the house should be done differently based on their five-year journey to the house and all their appreciation to the house. Uh, the issues of induction, the induction of new members, I feel um, we need to do it differently. We need to uh, uh, induct members uh, in terms of the journey to the house, the journey or the five-year journey, not the appreciation of members into this house. You need to give them the journey to uh, or the five-year journey through this house, rather than the induction that we did for the two times I've been here. Uh, whenever Parliament calls on, on, on us to, for induction, they seem to, to invite you as a welcoming rather than a cost through. Therefore, it is important that induction is done in, in maybe two phases. Phase one, that one which they welcome us. And phase two, most likely, after the first session of the house, let there be a full, in the, a full, um, a full uh, seminar for the members to really appreciate just that one year they've been in session and the other four sessions which are coming, how are they going to move? So that we don't in, in introduce members and leave them midway with themselves. Number two, um, they allow us to hire staff. That's a good thing. But how do they manage this staff in terms of enriching this staff with what is required on the floor. He said that for the past 10 years he has been in the house. He has managed to propose three bills on the issues of legislation, but only one has gone through since because it has been applied by most administrations. The bill Wango says pay touches on the issues of free primary and secondary education basing on KCPE and KCSE. I've had to push three bills for the 10 years I've been here. Only one has gone through, two are still hanging. The reason being, uh, and the one which has gone through, I'm proud of it. Every administration is proud to be associated with it. Uh, the bill that touches on, on uh, free primary education uh, in terms of exam, uh, uh, KCP and KCSE, uh, how it, is, it, it responds in terms of uh, assisting, assisting. Uh, the Kenyan populace. That's my bill. Uh, the Jubilee administration took over the same bill, made free primary education, and pushed partially free secondary education. Wangui was also a staunch supporter of Raila Odinga's manifesto, which was pushing for free primary, secondary, and tertiary education. The right hand of Raila Odinga has taken it up completely and says it is not just free primary education and what is happening in secondary education but he wants to make it as free primary secondary to university complete completely he is effecting article 43 of the constitution so that you get education as you are required as a Kenyan. He also feels that it's high time the legislation be placed on the parliamentary committees based on the experience, skills and knowledge that one has for the betterment of quick solutions on worrying issues. I would want to look at the committees with reference to the new standing orders that were passed the other day, whereby we look at uh, also your specialization. Currently, or the previous uh, parliaments, we will not be looking at your specialization. We will looking at members in general. But what is the practice here? When we come on the floor today, issues of medical health, we look at the former peers, uh, Professor Nikal. He looks at them and dissects them. We look at Dr. Uh, Kibunguchi, a very famous non-gynecologist. Non, uh, Matters of law, we look at Dr. Atwenda Molo, what is he advising us in terms of this? On Vokaluma, what is he saying? He drives us to follow suit. Matters of economy, I come in 
and other stakeholders come in. Now, here he narrates his second side of experience. He has experience in the parliament. The experience about the, the position I hold, I would want to say it has been very challenging. I came over into the leadership of the majority side. Unfortunately, the majority was divided into two. Silently, there was the Tanga Tanga and the Kieleweke side. I am supposed to whip both sides, whereby one side is not seeing each other. We are all entering this house, but when we live at the door, each one of us goes his side. Having been nominated by his party to vie for the position of being the member of parliament for Namhol constituency, Wango says that he always was loyal and strategic on his agenda. Our leader has an eye to know who is this person that can take over should so and so happen, should it happen that he is not in support of my, my agenda. So I want to believe my party leader looked at loyalty. Uh, loyalty was very key. Above all, Wangui has a family of which he says, in spite planning for the people of Navaholo constituency, he must also plan for his family. Uh, family comes first. I'm a family man. And um, there is time for the family. If you don't look for food for the family, again you will fail. You cannot be a family person all throughout. So I really try to plan for my family. When do I see, have, have time with them? When do I have to be on the floor? And when do I have to engage in commercial ventures that I look for some small money for my family? He could not also hesitate to pose an advice to his fellow politicians. I would want to tell politicians that uh, life is a journey. Uh, politics is not for now. Politics is for posterity. Do not engage in politics with an aim of making money today. You will make money after a journey. So make money out of a journey in politics. Don't rush to, to be in politics now to be rich. There is no richness in politics. There is only but power in politics. So if you are looking for wealth, please don't look for wealth from politics. Look for wealth in business. But if you are looking for power, to be able to stand tall and talk before men and women, please come to politics. But don't come to politics with an aim of making money. No. Wangwe also claims that it was not an accident for him to become the member of parliament for Navaholo constituency since he has managed to move the people of Navaholo from one step to another and he is determined to progress and more. I feel I did not come in by accident. I made a decision to, to serve the people. I wouldn't want to imagine that it will flip that way. Okay. Imagining of it is wrong. I want to be in it and successfully deliver my people. So that you see what happens is since I came into it, it has been flowing the way I have planned for it. Taking my people from one step to another, I strongly feel there should be no one time, I have never imagined that I would have loved to go back to the other world. One, politics has not stopped me from doing business. I am still doing my own business the way I used to do. The only challenge is I'm now doing business and politics. So for me, I have no, nothing to imagine that the other flip side can, can take me back to imagine that I wish I did not join politics. No, I don't regret. Reporting for Maisha Prime, Maisha Television, I'm William Juma.